let's talk about immutability. So here's a simple question. So let's have a um, vector just containing 1, 2, and 3. Okay, if I ask what is the value of v, well, that's the vector. Okay, now um, what I do, conjoin v number 4, and it of course produces this vector 1, 2, 3, and 4. Another question is, what is the current value of v? So if I evaluate v again, what happens? And, um, well, if your answer is 1, 2, 3, then, um, then it's just fine. That is absolutely no problem, um, because you, you probably haven't done any programming before, so you are not used to uh, mutable data structures. So what happens here is that we have uh, this vector 1, 2, 3, and the symbol v just points to that in a sense. So it is bound to uh, that symbol. Here we call a function that takes a vector and um, creates a new vector that's the key issue here, that will um, contain the element 4, okay? but does not touch the original vector v. It produces a, a new vector. So that means that if I create a vector, that is, you can't change that. That is, that is the same um, for all of its, its lifetime. This is in contrast with other programming languages where you sort of have a, a data structure and you add elements to it and it's actually changing. Okay, so this is like, like these are two different approaches and um, this one is a bit more um, unusual <laughs> in a sense, but if you do parallel programming this is this is really the way to go. Okay, so um, if you think about it, when you say uh, we increment forty two, right? And then you ask, oh, what is the value of forty two? That's forty two. So it's like if you have a single number, you don't expect that the uh, function call, increment function call will change that value, right? So it's sort of natural that numbers are immutable. Number 42 is number 42 forever, okay? So here you have to think about um, the immutability of the vector as well. If you have a vector 1, 2, 3, that's not going to change. It will not get any new element. Well, you can create a new one. Okay, or um, you know, I can um, I can sort of have a new vector okay, and now I ask what is v? That's fine. What is v one? That's fine as well. Okay, but I have the original one. Now the question is that, uh, yeah, what happens if you have a, um, it's about efficiency. So what happens if you have a vector that contains 2 million elements? And then you just want to add one more. So what does the system do? What does closure do? It's just copies the 1 million vector and just it's a new one, so that's your new vector. Or does it do something more clever? And it, yes, it does something more clever. It's called structural sharing because it's just 
well, it creates a new data structure somewhere in the memory that has the old one, it's referencing the old one, and just creating a new one that points to the old one and has the new element. It has the new element as well. Okay, so it's like you don't need to worry. So data structures in closure are immutable. If you call a function that produces a new one, even if it feels like that, oh, I'm I'm adding an element to a, a vector, and um, and that's actually a good thing.